All right, Shalom. Shalom. But the Hebrew Israelites back again with another lesson through the spirit and power, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Before we begin this lesson, we're going to give all honor, praise, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Yahushai. All right, double honors to the elders and the apostles, which we learned from. You already know who they are. Shalom to Arkwaf in order, and Shalom to Israelites scattered abroad. It may look like these other nations. You might look like a so-called white man, Chinese man, Arab, or whatever. But if your sea line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are indeed a Hebrew Israelite because this thing ain't about color. It is about sea line, okay? So if your sea line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, regardless of what you look like, you are a Hebrew Israelite. Therefore, we're not the black Hebrew Israelites, as some people like to call us. We are the biblical Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. Okay, black Hebrew Israelite was a, uh, a buzzword that was put on us to make us look like some kind of cult or black power movement. Okay, when it's nothing to do with that. We're the people of the book and we're here in these end times to declare the downfall of Esau Edom's kingdom, prophesy the downfall of this place and teach you the truth of the Holy Bible and teach you Hebrew Israelites who you are so that you can come back to your power, which ne whose name is Yahweh. Bahasham Yahushai before all hell breaks loose, okay? Because the door of repentance, the door of uh, salvation is closing fast. All right? <clears throat> right, in this lesson, we're going to go into uh, basically, we're going to speak on um, depopulation and how, <clears throat> how the scriptures speak about depopulation and how that is biblical prophecy it is coming in the very near future when this dollar crashes as you can see right now bricks uh bricks are forming an alliance to crash the us dollar which is also a biblical prophecy and when that happens you're going to see a chain reaction across the globe where will be in the time of Jacob's, what the Bible calls Jacob's trouble, and there will be famine, pestilence, World War Three will reach a higher level, and you're going to see mass death. And this lines up with a few things that have surfaced as of late, where you got quotes from a man named Klaus Schwab, who looks like Dr. Evil, okay, this bald head German man, German Edomite. <laughs> And uh, he's basically saying that in 2025, that billions will die. Okay. Apparently, this is a quote from him. You know, I don't know the ins and outs of how true this is, but I have no reason not to believe it because I understand the diabolical plans of these elites. Okay. And the scriptures will reveal this to you if you learn from the correct teachers of the Holy Bible. They'll show you. <coughs> That this is the thoughts of the elites. And the thoughts of the elites is in the scriptures, man. But the Lord is going to frustrate the devices <coughs> of the crafty. Okay? So they ain't going to fulfill their NWO agenda. They're going to only get so far. Alright? So, to start this lesson off, I think we need to play a clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen real quick. Go live. Alright? Alright? So, as you see here, <clears throat> this is the image I'm talking about. You know, this has been circulating lately. And it says, and it's apparently a quote from Klaus Schwab. I don't know what that's below it says in German. I think that's German. But this is the only image I could come across for this lesson. Um, but apparently, billions will die in 2025. And there's a lot of things that um, make me believe that this is true. And one of them, the main reason is because it is biblical prophecy. And we're going to bring out those scriptures in a few minutes, Lord willing, right? But apparently billions will die in 2025. Now, I just want to show you another clip real quick. And this guy will, I'm going to show you a clip. And this guy's going to break down uh, better than I can. He'll break down um, more information involving uh, this clip right this article right here so this is the clip i'm talking about <clears throat> all right check it out a world economic forum reports hiding in plain sight confirms that upwards of six billion people will die in 2025 
And according to reports from Davos, Klaus Schwab has confirmed the stated goal is on target to be achieved. The global elite have been warning us about their plans to radically depopulate the Earth by any means necessary. And now, the results are playing out before our eyes. If we have any hope of stopping them from achieving their goal of murdering the vast majority of humanity and turning Earth into a prison planet to enslave the rest, this information in the report must be shared far and wide. WF co-founder Klaus Schwab was caught boasting in a loose-lipped moment with reporters that Agenda 2030 is a red herring or ruse to throw normies off the scent. In reality, the situation is more urgent than that. 2025 is the year the elites are earmarking for massive worldwide depopulation. And according to Schwab, the goal of reducing the population by more than 6 billion people is on track to be achieved. A BBC journalist reported that she was summoned to Davos earlier this month for the regular meeting where Klaus Schwab briefs the mainstream media on which narratives to promote in order to advance the globalist agenda. The journalist noted that it was her first time attending the monthly media meeting in Davos, though some of her colleagues have been participating for years. She describes Klaus as being strangely emotional, almost as if he were intoxicated, laughing frequently and reminiscing in a sociopathic manner about the depopulation agenda which he admitted has been intricately planned for decades. It was my first time visiting Klaus's lair, though most of my colleagues had been there before. They warned me it would be unsettling, but nothing could have prepared me for what I experienced. They weren't surprised by what happened, but I was horrified. The place was surreal, like something out of a nightmare. Scrupulously clean, yet sinister, and perched high in the Swiss mountains. When I met him, I expected cold calculation, and yeah, that was there. But what I didn't expect was the strange, almost emotional state he was in. He was laughing, almost drunkenly, as he recounted his plans. It was as if he was reminiscing fondly about some long-held dream. He started talking about the depopulation agenda, and that's when it really hit me. He wasn't just outlining some distant theory. He was recalling it like a twisted memory, something carefully planned for decades. He said... The chickens are finally coming home to roost. There was something about this phrase that made me feel sick to my stomach, and it wasn't just because of his accent. His voice would waver between chilling calm and sudden bursts of laughter, as if he found the whole thing amusing in the most grotesque way. He spoke about the plan to eradicate six billion people by next year, but it wasn't this idea alone that shook me. It was how he delivered it. There was a bizarre mix of pride and nostalgia in his tone. He spoke slowly and clearly as if he were recounting a great achievement. He even seemed to get choked up at one point, as if this horror he was planning was something deeply personal to him. My colleagues, they'd warned me, but they seemed almost resigned to it. They weren't shocked, not like I was. To them, it was just another story, another day. But to me, it was a nightmare come to life. The way he spoke. The way he laughed about it. It was like he was planning a practical joke, not plotting mass murder. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He was utterly convinced this was the right course, that this was the future. And in that moment, I realised just how real the danger was. This wasn't just a madman's rant. It was a meticulously planned operation, decades in the making. I've never felt so helpless knowing that I was face to face with someone who had the power and the intent to carry out the most horrifying agenda imaginable. And the worst part? He seemed to enjoy every minute of it. Schwab has every reason to feel confident in the fulfilment of his evil plans. He has recruited the majority of the cabinets in the governments of Western nations, subverting our democracies. The WF's generation of young global leaders have destroyed from the inside the once great nations of the UK, France, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. The mainstream media, the education system and science have been compromised by the globalist elite, paid off by eugenicist billionaires and megalomaniacs to become mouthpieces of the globalist agenda. All right, so as you just saw, that video that you just saw, now, this is the diabolical plans of the elites, not just Klaus Schwab. Now, he's talking about Klaus Schwab in general and that lady you just heard, that interview from that lady, they're talking about Klaus Schwab, but this is the thought of the elites in general. They're diabolical. They have a sick plan. And when they talk about us being useless eaters, they really mean that. They have no emotion and they really are excited about the plans of depopulating this earth. Meaning, 
if you look at your child right now or your children, right? As much as you as a parent care about your children, these elites want your children dead. They want them to starve to death, basically, in the most unhumane, inhumane way possible, man. Okay? So when we say that Esau Edom is the devil that the Bible speaks of, a lot of you are going to not, you ain't going to learn until you're on a damn meat hook, man. You ain't going to learn until it's too late. And the prophets have been out here warning you, but you call us black Hebrew Israelites and think that we're chatting crap. Okay? <clears throat> the, the Lord has sent prophets to warn you, and that time of being warned and taking heed to the warning is almost up, man. Because when Jacob's trouble hits, you people, it's too late, man. So I just got a few precepts I want to read real quick, and then uh, we'll take it from there because I've got one or two more clips I want to play also. Second. All right. So we're starting at uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 21 and verse 8. It says, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. And the right hand of Yahweh is Yahweh Shai, okay? Who the world calls Jesus. The right hand of the Most High is his son. All right. Next verse, it says, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger, which is the day of the Lord. Basically, he's going to make them as a fiery oven because he's going to rain nukes upon them. Basically, this World War Three is going to escalate until it goes nu full-blown nuclear. Okay. It is biblical prophecy that is the end game and the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven, which is the new rulership. Okay. So the Lord is getting ready to nuke them in the midst of them fulfilling their NWO agenda. It says, Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath and the fire shall devour them. Them nukes. Next verse, Psalms. 21 and 10 it says their fruit meaning these Edomites the so called white man it says their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth and their seed same thing and their seed from the children of men because these people will never live at peace with us they're never going to change their ways they're always going to rob spoil and plunder nations and keep the children of the Lord under their foot at the bottom in ghettos and stuff okay so the, the only way there's ever going to be peace on earth is when the Lord takes them out. There will be no kingdom of heaven and new earth with these people in the earth, man. Salvation isn't for everybody. The book of Obadiah also prophesies the end of these people in Obadiah 1 and 18. Read it for yourself. Next verse, Psalms 21 and 11, it says, For they intended evil against thee. You need to keep that in mind. Highlight that bit right there. Their diabolical plans to depopulate this earth, right? Order ab chao, order out of chaos. So they're going to bring chaos to the earth, go underground into their bunkers and leave us on the surface while we're killing each other over a, a, a can of beans, man. A can of baked, be baked beans, man. This is their diabolical plans. They want to starve your children to death. Just like I said earlier, man. Six billion will die in 2025, they're saying. And they laugh about it. Just like you saw in that video. That was their diabolical plans, is to basically <coughs> kill off a mass population of the earth because they call us useless eaters. And they don't need us anymore. They got machines now that can do the things that we do. So it's ripened there. The time is ripe and ready for their plans to work. And this is what they got planned. So all you people out there complaining about how we get on a so-called white man and call him the devil that the Bible speaks of, you're about to realize soon why we say this. The Lord has revealed the future to us and what's getting ready to happen. He's revealed it to a certain few men. 
And when we tell people the truth of the Holy Bible, basically the future of this earth and who's who in this earth, you call us racists and hate preachers. You're going to feel really, really stupid when you see these things come to pass. So Psalms 21 and 11, I'm going to read it again. It says, for they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. So they are going to get so far with their NWO agenda. They're going to depopulate the earth vastly because it is biblical prophecy. And we're going to bring out those precepts in a minute. Okay, because the Bible is true. Not one contradiction in it. But they're only going to get so far. The Lord is going to rain them missiles on them in the midst of microchipping you all up. Okay, which is the MOTB in Revelations 13 and verse 16. Okay, and that's a whole nother lesson which I plan to get into in the near future. All right. Psalms 21 and 12, it says, Therefore shalt thou make, their, make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. So they're going to flee from the iron weapon, but the, what is it? They shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike them through, the scriptures say. I forget the exact precept, but it goes hand in hand with this one right here. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, right? <laughs> so they're going to flee to their bunkers. It says, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows. Basically, when World War Three reaches its peak and Putin hits that button, okay? Which is going to cause a chain reaction and all countries, all nations are going to press the button at the same time. All right, Psalms 21 and 13. Be thou exalted, Yahweh, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. So the elect are going to be rejoicing when this comes, man. <laughs> you know, the Lord is... is uh, The ones that know what's going on and the ones who are calling on his name and trusting in his mercy, hey, we're going to be rejoicing when we see this happen. A nuclear holocaust, you know? People may think that's hateful for us to be uh, hastening a nuclear holocaust. But we know the future. We know the story. We know the script. We read these scriptures and we understand the future of this world. We know that there's a happy ending for the elect of Israel. This is why we do what we do in hopes to be a part of that elect. All right. So... <clears throat> that's that those are those precepts we're going to leave it there um right did you have anything you wanted to bring out yeah um so again you were um talking about how you know like a lot of people are going to be taken off the earth you know um and and again in in uh, the scriptures it it does go into um a lot of these um these, these topics you know um i wasn't going to bring out a scripture just yet but what i was going to say is is that you know the the more time goes on the more we can see that these things are getting ready to pop off man um that video that that we just watched you know clearly shows that that klaus schwab you know is that that's the the plans of the elites this is what their plan is to to wipe out the the population of the earth and make it more manageable. What do you think they mean by making it more manageable? You know yeah. what I mean? Like that MOTB system. You know, a lot of people would buck up against it. But if there's a smaller uh, margin of people that are, uh, you know, um, uh, injected with the system, it's, manage it's more manageable for them, you know? Right. Yep. Because they have to depopulate the earth to make these plans go smoother, basically. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, it's, it's, it's easier to control, you know, one billion people as opposed to controlling seven billion people, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it goes, you know, that, that basically goes hand in hand with the next clip I'm about to play because I've got a clip on my Instagram where a woman talks about her interview with one of the elites and how this, it was a woman, and this woman, who was a member of the elites, she was laughing... <laughs> and acting giddy and happy just like that woman in the first video i just showed you said 
about their pl diabolical plans to uh, depopulate the earth. They call us useless eaters. And this woman in particular said that it's almost time for the great culling. <laughs> and I, I don't know the exact definition of culling, but I know it's to do with uh, wiping out a, a vast number of people in the earth, man. So... Let me um, quickly... I've got the definition here for Cullen, if, if you want there me to read go. it out. Car. Car. Yeah, so it says, uh, Cullen, uh, reduction of a wild animal population by selective slaughter. Um, the slaughter. action of sending an inferior or surplus farm animal to be slaughtered. Now, you can you can replace that that term animal for, for people, basically. You know? Yeah. You, you can yeah. use that interchangeably if you want. You know what I mean? Because they look at us as, as we're animals, you know what I mean? Yeah. Goyim. Mm -hmm. Useless eaters. They have all kinds of names for us. Rodents. Um, deplorables. Um, what is it? Uh, human weeds. <laughs> you know? Yeah, look. There's, there's, so many... there's, there's a second uh, um, definition here. It says cull. It says reduce the population of a wild animal by selective slaughter. <laughs> you see what I mean? So that's it, and it's got the wild animal in in brackets because you know it can go into animals, mm -hmm. but it basically means <laughs> it can go into people too. You know, it's basically the uh, slaughter of a large population of what they call inferior mm -hmm. people, which the elites they look at us as inferior. We're in the way of them having paradise on earth where they can have as many mansion parties and Epstein islands as they want without consequence. As many satanic rituals as they want and child sacrifices and stuff. Mm -hmm. They can eat as many babies and traffic as many children as they want, man. We're on the we're on the winning team over here that are preaching a true gospel. And we're on the we're on the right side of the most high man. Yahabashim Yahweh Shai. We're the ones that are fighting with the right weapons man because all you people out there marching and voting and protesting man you people are idiots there's no other way to put it you're really dumb because the only way to fight against these elites is spiritual we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal man you know so we use the holy bible have you not seen the movie the book of eli they don't the elites are the ones that make up these movies and they don't make these movies uh they don't come up with these ideas for these movies from thin air it's all based on the scriptures man they're obsessed with the bible because they understand it the scriptures say even the devils believe and tremble that's these elites man they know the name of the lord they know who the true prophets are anyway before i ramble on let me play this clip real quick just give me a second to get to it. All right, so right here, <clears throat> this is the first clip I want to play. Came to me and she had chronic um, uh, issues, health issues that um, we did manage to correct. And one day she said to me, you know, it's almost time for the great culling to begin. And I said, what? What? She said, culling, C-U-L-L-I. -L -L I didn't know the word, but what are you talking about? She said, the culling of the useless eaters. Now, this was in 2002. I said, what's a useless eater? She said, not what, my dear, who? I said, okay, who's a useless eater? She said, those people who are consuming our non-renewable resources. And I said to her, did it ever occur to you that you're consuming their non-renewable resources? And she said, oh, well, that's an interesting idea. Well, anyway, and she dismissed that out of hand. She said, uh, it's almost time for the culling of the useless eaters. And I said, well, how many of these useless eaters are you planning on culling? And she said, 90%. And I said, 90% of what? And she said, the total world population. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
your enormous fortune, this is a, an immensely wealthy person, yes. your enormous fortune depends on selling massive amounts of shit to huge numbers of people. If you don't have huge, huge numbers of people to sell your massive amounts of shit to, how are you going to maintain your enormous fortune? And she said, no, you really don't understand, do you, my dear? I said, clearly not. She said, the mercantile era is coming to an end. We are moving to a neo-feudal era. There will be us, the neo-aristocrats at the top, surrounded by our servants and servitors, and around them, our technicians. And that entire short pyramid requires only 10% of the current world population. So there you have it. That's the interview I was talking about, ma'am. She had an interview with a female member of the elites, and she's talking about the great culling. And this was back in 2002. So you know, being that we're now in 2024, going on 25, that this is, hey, we're close, man. Because she, she back then said it was almost time. Now, it may seem like it's been a long time, but really, time is flying, man. So, you know, it really hasn't really been that long. You know, Lord is speeding up the time for the elect's sake. So a year is going by a lot quicker than it, than it used to. So we're very close to this so-called great culling, man. Now, it's biblical prophecy. Like, let me pull up a quick uh, clip and then I'm going to um, I'm going to read that and then we'll bring out some more um, precepts. Right. So as you can see here, this is a, a quote apparently out of Klaus Schwab's book. But upon a bit of research involving this, because I wanted to make sure that this wasn't a fake article, I learned that this is actually, I wrote it down, it says this is um, John Coleman's Conspirators Hierarchy. It says the story of the committee of 300. So if you want to um, do your research, you can find out where this article actually came from. But nevertheless, this is a real um, part of their plans. You know, I don't know what, I don't exactly understand where the book came from. This is just what I've researched and seen. I don't know how true it is. I'll read it again. It says, John Coleman's Conspirators hier Hierarchy. It says, um, Story of the Committee of 300. So if you want to research that on your own time, do that. But this is what it says. It says, At least 4 billion useless eaters uh, shall be eliminated by the year 2050, which we ain't got that long. Okay. Their agenda is Agenda 2030. And they're already talking about speeding that up because they're saying that that's too long. Like the scriptures talk about how the devil is coming down, having great wrath because he know if that he have but a short time. They ain't, they know they ain't got long left. So these people are getting ready to speed up their plans of their NWO agenda, man, which falls right in the hands of the Lord, man, right in the hands of prophecy. So it says, um. At least 4 billion useless eaters shall be eliminated by the year 2050 by means of limited wars, which we're seeing going on right now. Ukraine, Israel, Russia, China, all of that. It says organized epidemics of fatal rapid acting disease and starvation, right? Organized, keyword, all right? Keep that in mind. 
you're talking about M parks, you're talking about the vid, you're talking about um uh this new um EE mosquito virus <laughs> and and check out what Bill Gates was doing with his research upon mosquitoes, man, genetically modified mosquitoes. And then uh, them clips of him talk uh, with it, him him and his husband, <laughs> apparent wife, looks like a damn man, side by side smirking with that evil grin on their face, talking about the next the next one will get their attention. Hey man, <laughs> it's all coming together. It says um, organized epidemics of fatal rapid rapid acting diseases and starvation starvation is also biblical prophecy because when jacob's trouble reaches its peak there's going to be no food anywhere scriptures speak about that also so a lot of people are getting ready to die from starvation lord willing i'll pull up second Ezra's five and one and that'll speak on that in just a moment uh i believe it's second Ezra's five and one we'll find it though it says energy Food and water shall be kept at kept at sub substance levels for the non-elite. Okay, so they're basically going to ration your food. Have you eaten bugs? This is their plan. They're already making um, cricket flour to make bread and things things of that sort. Basically, want us eating bugs while they're sat there eating filet, filet mignon. Okay, these elites. There even there's even clips where they talk about us being going on holiday in the metaverse, their virtual reality headsets while they take real holidays on their private jets, feeling the actual natural sun, and we get to see an artificial sun inside a video, uh, in, in in a video game, man. This is their plans for us, while they lock us down in 15 minute cities. Okay, this is their diabolical plans. It says. Energy, food, and water shall be kept at substance levels for the non-elite, starting with the white populations of Western Europe. And they're saying that because that's the countries where these people reside, these elites. And that's where they're going to start, is in their own countries. Then they're going to spread across to the brown-colored countries. Okay, this is their plans. But nonetheless, it's not that they're targeting so-called white people. You're not oppressed. It's just that you so happen to be uh your population happens to be where these elites reside so uh it says of western europe and north america and then spreading to other races okay it says the population of canada western europe and the united states will be decimated more rapidly rapidly than other continents until the world's population reaches a manageable level of 1 billion which of which 500 million will consist of chinese and japanese races <laughs> because these people were wearing masks way before lockdowns these people are are, are fear-mongered and uh, uh they're wired basically. differently yeah they're wired differently that's <laughs> right you know these people comply with every uh government measure a government uh law that comes out man look at north korea they worship kim kim jong-un or whatever his name is like a damn god they wouldn't dare speak out against him he's got these people living in fear because they make good slaves these people man packed up in sweatshops building iphones and all sorts of things man and a lot of them do it willingly okay they're obedient slaves they're easily manageable so basically it's saying um when it talks about how um that these countries will be decimated more rapidly than other continents until the world's population reaches a manageable level of one billion that goes in line with the deagle forecast which we're going to play in a few moments lord willing i've got that on deck but basically they're saying that england the uk is going to be the highest population of death the highest continent death rate is in that con that country um out of all other countries in the world man that's number one that's on the top of the list they're saying like 80 to 90 percent of the population of the uk will be dead in 2025 according to this deagle 
um, website, man, which predicts the world's population year to year. And they say for 2025, all of a sudden, the population is going to decrease drastically, which lets you know they're getting ready to go full steam ahead at any moment with their diabolical plans of, uh, of you useless eaters, man. So it says, um, so when it talks about right here, it says of which 500 million will consist of Chinese and Japanese races selected because they are people who have been regimented for centuries and who are accustomed to obeying authority without question. <laughs> and that's so true, like we just said. You know, it says from time to time there shall be artificially contri contrived food and water shortages. Basically organized famines, orchestrated famines. Okay. So this is, this is something that, you know, needs to be taken serious, man. Even if this is a fake article, this is still their plans. <laughs> Even if it's somebody's uh, thoughts as to what they think is going to happen, it's on point with what's going to happen, man. These elites are diabolical and this is their plans. So let me just quickly pull up some precepts and then we'll play some more clips, man. Yeah, I got a quick precept. Oh yeah, because yeah, you oh. mentioned about how these uh, these elites, you know, they're they're making that plan towards uh, the the year twenty fifty, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously we know the agenda twenty thirty is is what they're they're uh, aiming for, but again, like you say, you know, that's even that's taking too long for them, and they want to speed things up, and they want to make it to where, um, you know. I think they said the year 2025 um, is, is possibly as soon as that, you know, mm -hmm. 2025. Yep. I've got this precept here in the book of Job. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's Job chapter 14, verse 5. It says, Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So Esau understands that these prophecies are, are, are popping off one by one. And his time is very short. So like it says in the scriptures, you know, um, uh, Esau come in uh, as a flood, you know, roughly paraphrasing, you know, come down on, on um, the, the people as, as a flood. But um, it, it just goes to show you that Esau knows that his time is up. That's why he's uh, said in that article, yeah, by the year 2050, you know, 90% of the world is going to be, you know, depopulated. And then it's, agenda 2030 they want to make sure these these new cities and this nwo is is set in place but then you're hearing articles saying well no not 2030 because that's taking too long and we need it done now we need you know we need that uh executed as quickly as possible because they understand that they these prophecies are kicking off and they know once all the prophecies have, have been fulfilled that's that's a wrap for them you know we're we're literally on you know the, the MOTB at this point, you know, the digital system is there. There's waiting on uh, a big event to take place, which would be your, you know, economic global money crash, your system crash. And then they implement that, that MOTB and all hell breaks loose from there. And then World War Three, you know, boils over. And then that, that's the end for them. You know, that ain't yep. too far off, man. You, you can, you can almost imagine that, you know, towards the end of 2025, Around that time, you know, all that shit could kick off. You know what I mean? We won't even make it to 2030. So these elites understand that, you know, their time is is, is very short. You know, their yep. bounds, they ain't going to be able to pass that bound. They've got a set bound of, of their rulership and then it, that's it. Done forever. they got a bound, they're not allowed to pass a boundary. That's yeah, right. Yeah, just like the, the ocean has a boundary. It hits the beach and it don't go any further than that. All that water... The world is, you know, the, the planet is covered in, in, I think they said it's like 70% water, if I'm not mistaken. 75, 80% water. And it's like, you know, you, you mean to tell me that the land masses, there's a, you know, th that water can't just friggin' overflow. You know what I mean? It's, it's the Lord set the bound that the water cannot pass. Just like the Lord set the bound that Esau and this wicked system and this wicked kingdom can't pass. 
That's you know? why the scriptures also state that at the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Mm -hmm. In straits is a position of difficulty. So right now he's at the fullness of his sufficiency. This man has invented artificial intelligence and he's got robots that work the jobs that we can work. He's got internet. He's got all sorts of things. 5G towers everywhere. He's at the fullness of his sufficiency, man. At the peak of his kingdom, basically, man. Mm -hmm. So it says during that time, he'd be in a position of difficulty, straits. So that's why he's reached his bound. He's reached his limit. Now it's time for him to come down, man, so that Yasha Allah can rule because before this man kills everyone. That's it. But relating to what you said about, um, you know, he's got to speed things up. I've got this precept. Can you see it on the screen? Yeah. Just Revelation 12 and 12. It says, Re rejoice, therefore... No, therefore rejoice ye heavens, right? Ye, the heavens it's talking about here is the elect. So it says, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, meaning the masses of the people that are getting ready to die. The scriptures say that they were born in vain. Um, second Ezra 9 and 22. Okay. It says, um, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil, which is Esau Edom, okay, it says, For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. So his rulership is almost up, okay, which lines up with, this is a precept to basically uh, Second Ezra 6 and 9, man, where it says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, meaning Esau, the so-called white man, is the one ruling at the end, the Rothschilds, DuPonts, Gettys, Rockefellers, and all them. Okay. And it says that Jacob, which is you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, it says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, meaning that you're getting ready to rule next. In other words, he knows he ain't got long left to rule, which links up with this preset right here. So they want to speed things up and get this culling going. Okay. Now, I just want to bring this out quick. This is Daniel 12 and 1. It says, and it's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, which is when the system collapses and you start to see mass death everywhere. You're going to see bodies everywhere, man. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Talking about the Israelites. So the great prince Michael, the archangel, is basically going to have to intervene during this time. Because it's going to be such a time to where we're going to need divine intervention to, the divine intervention to get us through it. This time is getting ready to be ugly, man. It says, and there shall be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble. Pursuing to Jeremiah 30 and 7, such as was never since there was a nation, even to that same time, meaning there's never been a time like this or ever will. It says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, right? Everyone that shall be found written in the book, the book of life. So the ones that have been <laughs> doing as the Lord commands, you know, getting on his good list, let's just say, right? The ones that took heed and prepared themselves, scriptures say a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. How do you hide yourself? Is by purifying your mind, your, yourself, renewing your mind, being born again. So it says, um, uh, at that time shall thy people be delivered, everyone that shall be found in the written in the book of life. So, you know, the ones that take heed, you know, and hide themselves, prudent man for see if the evil and hide himself, those are the ones that are going to be saved. Those are the ones written in the book of life. We're living in that time, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, just to add quickly another precept or another yeah, um, scripture, you know, this is in the, the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Uh, and it reads, uh, 24 and verse 6, and it reads, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now, this is the time period that we're coming into, right? You, you're hearing about a different kind of war uh, popping off every day. You know, Ukraine's talking about firing weapons inside Russia and attacking Russia at the moment. You know, you oh, got the UK, the UK and America also. Yeah, and yeah. Putin said, if he feels threatened, he's going to push that button. Push, that's it. <laughs> you know, game over. Russia, Putin said, Russia ain't never losing. Or, yeah. you know, if, if they do end up in a situation 
which we know they ain't gonna, but, you know, they end up in a situation where they're surrounded, they're cornered, and, you know, they're, they're about to take over. They, Russia said he's going to launch everything he's got. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, if you take him down, you're taking the rest of the world with you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but then you've got all the allies of Russia as well, like uh, Iran, North Korea, China. You've got all these, you know, these, these nations that, that are standing up against uh, uh, Babylon, a.k.a. America. Right, you got all the stuff that's kicking off over in the so-called Middle East, Yemen, Iran, um, you know, against you know that that country. I won't I won't say it because you know <laughs> YouTube likes to get a bit you know odd when it comes to you know talking about them. But it says it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So we understand that, hey, we're not there yet, but we see these things coming to pass. You know, and just to talk about when, you know, in, in regards to this, um, this depopulation thing, you have, you know, where they've even said that they're going to try and control people through through the, the food, the food sources, right? And, and this is what it says. This is the point that I wanted to get to. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, right? That's the key point, the famines, you know? They're going to create these these um, orchestrated events where famine, you know, is a large contributor of the depopulation agenda, right? Okay. It says, and pestilences, which obviously, you know, my brother mentioned earlier about the, you know, the, the, the pestilences that are coming upon the earth, right? You got the, you know, all the... Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know the the uh, what do they call them? The the WHO saying that these are the new boogeyman and you know lockdowns coming back and all that other stuff. You know it says uh, and earthquakes in diverse places and we're seeing like natural disasters. I mean, look at uh, what is it China or Taiwan or wherever they got hit by that typhoon. I mean all these all these events that are uh, are taking place and and you know. You, you hear of earthquakes, volcanoes going off. You had that uh, eruption in, what was it, Yellowstone National Park, where one of them geysers went absolutely ballistic, acting yeah. out of character, basically. Like, yeah, it shows you that the earth is groaning, man. The earth is... is uh, rising is, up is, against it. Is rising <laughs> up against. And and yeah. verse, uh, verse 8 says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. This is just the beginning. Like yep. my brother mentioned in the book of Daniel 12, they, it's, it's a time like no other. It's not a time that we've, as as people, have ever experienced before or ever will experience. That's right, man. You see? Let me just bring out my preset real quick, uh -huh. man. Well, a couple of precepts. Um, bear with me here. Can you see that? Second mm -hmm. Ezra 16, yeah? It says, woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Talking about this time of trouble that we're coming into right so Ezra's is basically having a vision of the future back when this was back when he saw this back when um this is talking about right so it says woe is me woe is me meaning uh d destruction is me you know i'm through basically <laughs> who's gonna who, who's gonna save me in them days man because he knew he understood reincarnation which is why i say that if you don't understand uh how reincarnation is biblical then you'll never fully understand the bible man you have to learn 100 percent truth to in order to put all the pieces together to develop a clear picture as to what the bible is talking about so you know he knew that he he understood reincarnation and and he knew he was going to be alive during this time back in the next generation the final generation he says who deliver me in those days right the time of jacob's trouble it says, um, Second Ezra 16 and 18, it says, the beginning of sorrows, like you said, this is just the beginning of sorrows, remember? Mm -hmm. You just brought that out in uh, Matthew 24. It mm -hmm. says, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, right? Because this is what's coming. It says, the beginning of famine and great death, right? So the great culling. And a lot of people that die are going to die from hunger, and the sword, which the sword can also mean, it means the modern day sword is the gun or a weapon that can kill you, a machete, baseball bat, whatever, 
okay, a weapon, murder weapon. But another murder weapon is a biological weapon made in a lab. Hint, hint. I ain't gonna say too much for this video gets taken down. But you get where I'm going with this. It says famine and great death. It says the beginning of wars, which we see happening right now. We're living amongst in, in that time. It says, and the powers, meaning these elites, the powers shall stand in fear because they understand what time it is. They know they have a short time and they're trembling. Okay, it says the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Because again, he knew he was going to be here in that time. Verse 19, it says, Behold, famine, which is food shortage, and plague, you know, diseases, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendments. So the Lord has sent these. This is part of his story. This is part of his judgments. But he sent them as scourges for amendment, basically to mend you, to get you right. But you ain't going to get right, most of you. You're not going to repent. Two thirds of Israel prophesied to be cut off and die, man. So it says here, it's, it's going to say it here in verse 20. It says, but for all these things, they shall not return from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. So these people are in La La Land, man. They're too busy, distracted by bread and circus, man. Watching the, the what is it, the uh, gala, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, music awards. They're too busy with folly and entertainment, man. They're scrolling on TikTok watching bullcrap watching football game or whatever man they're they're not paying attention to the times they're living in they think it's a joke they think that things are gonna fix themselves it's all gonna blow over man so it says but for all these things they shall not turn from their wickedness meaning they're not gonna repent and change their ways and get on the lord's good side and listen to what the prophets have been saying and be always mindful of the scourges so verse 21, it says, Behold, victuals, which means food, shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. These people think they're good because they can run to McDonald's and get a little cheeseburger for $2.99 or whatever, man. So they think it's always going to be like that. It says, And even then, during this time that things are sweet, even then shall evils grow upon the earth. Child trafficking, <laughs> you know, uh, Venezuelan gangs, coming and taking over your crib that's so many explanations but evils are growing in the earth women killing their babies like it's nothing and eating cats and and dogs and stuff crazy man it says even then shall evils grow upon the earth sword famine and great confusion like people want answers they want to know what's going on man it says for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine food shortage so it means that a large population of the earth, which is the billions that Klaus Schwab was talking about, shall perish of famine. And the other that escape the hunger, which, you know, famine is food shortage, hunger. The other that escape the famine, right, shall the sword destroy. So basically, either the, the, the juice that they, that they lined up and stuck out their arm for, you know, that will either get them. Or they're going to die from civil war or from the violence and chaos that's going to pursue when people have no food. Everybody's going to be out on missions trying to find food, killing each other, eating each other. So great death is coming and this is what the elites know is going to happen. And although they're excited about it, they're still shitting themselves, man. It says, and the dead shall be cast out as dung, right? So the carcasses are going to be laid out in the street rotten. It says, and there shall be no man to comfort them, meaning giving them a proper burial. There ain't going to be funerals and there ain't going to be um, ambulances and police to protect you and all these things that you see in a functioning society because things are going to collapse. When the dollar collapses, that's it. And we're very close to that time, man. There ain't gonna be no funerals for these dead bodies everywhere. There's gonna be too many dead bodies, man. It says, for the earth shall be wasted and the cities shall be cast down. You're gonna see buildings burned down. You know, all the shops are gonna be looted. No, no food in them. Windows smashed, just buildings destroyed. The earth shall be wasted, man. 
And this is the time we're coming into. It ain't no joke. This is the end game. It says there shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. There ain't gonna be no farmers growing food or, you know, tractors going up the road cutting bushes so that so that the trees don't grow over the roads. It says the trees shall give fruit and who shall gather them? Verse 26, the grapes shall ripen and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men. And you know what? I think I'm going to start there. Because the point is made on that. In other words, depopulation is biblical prophecy. And we're reading it right here, man. This is part of the reason why they took the Apocrypha out. Because all these scriptures I'm just reading are from the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra's. A lot of times when I post these scriptures on um, Instagram, I get comments from people saying, what's second Ezra? What is that? They get confused because they've not been taught this in Christianity because the truth ain't in the Christian church. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got anything you want to bring out? Um, I mean, I was just going to say, um, you know, again, in the book of uh, second Ezra, let me uh, just pull it up real quick. Because um, you mentioned about how the, the store is going to be looted and, you know, pretty much everything's going to be gone. But there's a, a precept in the book of Second Ezra. Uh, let me just pull it up real quick. And it says, uh, I'm going to just go straight to the point. This is Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 22. It says, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown, the full right. storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. Now, when the famine kicks in, you know, what, what do you think the first place is they're gonna, uh, they're gonna attack? They're gonna go after the supermarkets and the places where the, the food storage is, you know what I mean? So one day, you know, everything's all gravy. You can go down to, to the store and you can get, you know, your, your essentials that you need. And then the next day you come in, like it's all kicked off and there's nothing left in the stores. You know what I mean? Look at look what happened in in uh, when we had the lockdowns. You know, people were going in there to get the essential uh, toilet roll, and you know the shelves were were empty, and you had people fighting. So even when they were bringing out pallets, you know, of toilet roll, people were you know at it like friggin' like wild animals. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was just over mm -hmm. toilet roll. Now imagine, like when it becomes you know uh, a, a food situation where the food supply is is, is cut low. You know, it's going to be a bloodbath out here, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm going to keep reading, actually. So it says, uh, Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 23, it says, The trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. Now, if you think about that, the, the, the sound uh, that it's, it's talking about is, you know, they go on the, the, the news you know, you get a news report like, oh, yeah, food insecurity, food is running short. So where, you know, people people hearing that are going to be afraid. They're going to be like, well, well, what are we supposed to do? There's no food. Let's let's panic buy. Let's, you know, get get the food while we can. And then every everybody else gets that same idea. And I notice in that, you know, you got the, the uh, people that have a little bit more money, just like they did with the toilet roll, stacking it and stacking it up to where you could barely fit any more in there. You know what I mean? And then everybody starts panicking. And that right. precept comes to mind. You know that precept where it says, uh, when they shall say peace and safety, then yeah. sudden destruction, man. Because these people are going to be in la-la land, thinking everything's sweet, thinking victuals are cheap. So cheap that they're in good case, like I just read. Yeah, let me... And uh, then all of a sudden, boom, it's going to kick off. That's that trumpet, man. Yeah, so this is First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. It says, for when they shall say peace and safety... Right, you have it. Uh, I'll just highlight it here: peace and safety. You know, because they say, "Oh, you know, well, there, there's plenty of food, and you know, we, we just need to get it out to the super." Yeah, if anything's gonna be, you know, secure, yeah, everything's I'm, gonna I'm be gonna safe. Save America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It says, "Then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape." You know, when That's you think good. of a pregnant woman, you know, as soon as a water breaks, ain't nothing stopping that child from coming. Exactly. You ain't stopping them birth pains. There's nothing mm -hmm. you can do about it, man. Because when it right. happens, you're going to wish you listened to the prophets, man. Yeah, yeah. We don't make these videos for entertainment. This is a warning. 
you know, and the Lord has given you plenty of chance. We've been saying these things for a long time, like a broken record. Mm -hmm. And it's all because the Lord's mercy is still stretched out upon you, man. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of you won't take heed, man. Yeah. And uh, just, just to finish off the point, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave it here, but this is Second Ezra's, uh, back in Second Ezra's chapter 6, verse 24. And it says, And at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. Right, so your close friends are gonna it's gonna get so bad out here, even people that you thought were close to you are gonna switch on you. It says and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of fountains shall stand still. Uh, uh the springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. You know, so we're we're talking about, you know, the the scriptures, you ain't gonna get the the, the, the word anymore because the famine of the word's gonna come. You know, so you ain't going to get no answers. You ain't going to get nothing. You know, food's going to be gone. Friends fighting, you know, over the last tin of beans. You know? be droughts. 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 Yep. You ain't going to have water. Access. A lot of people are going to die from thirst, too, mm -hmm. not just hunger. Thirst will get you before hunger will. Yeah, yeah, what they exactly. Say you can, what did they say? Three days without water. Yeah, it's like a, a three. Three minutes without air. Three days without water. Three weeks without food, that's it, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, and a lot of people ain't even prepared carnally. They ain't even stocked up on food. Yeah. Not that that's going to save you. That might, you know, that's wise. It might <laughs> enjoy your time in this, when, on this hell on earth for a bit. But you're going to, you, you ain't going to want to live through what's coming, man. You're mm -hmm. going to wish you were dead sooner. So that food that you store up will become a curse, man. Yeah, it might be a, might be a, slight benefit you know to, to to help you through it but hey you're gonna be a target when people you know are, are sort of getting thin and and you know their their face is all sinking in because you know their body's trying to grasp onto any bit of calorie and whatever and it's just you you know you become skinny and you're still walking around fat you know what i mean you're gonna be a target man they even go yeah. they, they're gonna know you got you got something yeah. They're going to know you got yeah. something, so they're going to follow you home. You're probably going to be the dinner to them. You know, you're, yeah, oh, you looking plump and juicy over there, you know? You know, like how you used to watch them cartoons where, you know, the, the character used to be so hungry and they would look at the, the you know, I think it's like Tom and Jerry or something. They'd look at, look at the, the character and all they see was like a big fucking juicy steak or chicken or something like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man, people are going to be walking around looking like crackheads around here, mm -hmm. man. Uh, let me just play another video real quick. Yeah. So I know this lesson's been lengthy, but it's still, you know, very... Uh, all this is very edifying if you take it serious, you know. Mm -hmm. But I want to play this clip right here because, like I said, you got you got this Deagle, um, Deagle website, which is some kind of military... Um, uh, website where for years they forecasted the population of the earth by country and 2025 is unlike any other time that there's ever been according to their forecast and they predict that a large population of the earth is going to be dead which lines up with biblical prophecy and it lines up with these elites plans talking about billions will die in 2025 man we're almost there man and you can see if you have any form of spiritual uh, spiritual discernment about you, you'll be able to see that this is true, man. We're very close to this time. So check it out. Right, so this is uh, what I was talking about. The Deagle 2025 uh, forecast by country, as you see at the top there. And you see the very top is United Kingdom, and then Ireland, and then the United States. So this is where the population in order is gonna you know this is the decreasing of each uh, country it's absolutely nuts yeah it's given like the 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 percentages of how many people like how many people are going to be uh, uh, how much population change is going to be so just That's to it. give you an example Trinidad and Tobago is going to be like 14 Point four percent of of the population being taken out, basically. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy the population change. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, and the UK was 77% yeah. compared to all these other countries. Because these other countries, um, you can grow food uh, better in these countries. For one, America is at the top of the list because, you know, the the people are all crazy in that country, man. And they all got guns. So, you know, it's getting ready to be violent uh, in that, in those countries. But... A lot of these other countries, you can live off the land easier. You know, there's there's more food and stuff. But it's saying like uh, the ones up above, they're like minus. You know what I mean? But the the ones that are coming up now, they're all in the the plus. It's almost as if their population is going to grow. Yeah. Yeah, so these, you know, these, this is what they forecast, but we don't know how true it is. We yeah. don't know how they come up with these numbers, but, and it says from, what does it say there? Population 2017 and then to 2025. So this is between 2017 and 2025. This isn't just um, one year. And then it shows the population change. Yeah, because what, what it's saying there is Lebanon's going to be the uh, the population Lebanon. that grows the most. <laughs> like, yeah. People are going to be booking uh, flights to Lebanon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, now, we don't know how true this is, so don't mm -hmm. just take it for gospel or whatever, man. But, yeah, yeah. You know, it does line, it is kind of odd, it is strange, and it does line up with biblical prophecy. Yeah, and as well as it says, uh, UK 63 million in 2017, but by 2025 is 14.5 million. Like, yeah. that's a significant drop of the amount of people <laughs> in the country, man. That's it, yep. So, and I've got a few precepts posted here, but you know, that's what's coming, man. So I'm going to go ahead and play, um, we all know about the Simpsons and how they love to predict things. And one thing that stands out to me about this prediction is where it talks about pestilence, famine, and war. And it also talks about, um, which is basically the horsemen of the tribulation or whatever. But basically it talks about um, this is going to happen during the time of an election, which we could see happening right now, man. So pay attention, pay close attention to this. <laughs> Homer, get down here. Your vote for president has never been more important. That's today. Hmm? Hmm. So vague. <laughs> You slept all day? You didn't vote? Hey, how bad could it be? Uh-oh. You owe me a new pair of glasses. Oh, that's what I get for voting for president. So they put it right in your face, man. And you can see how the cities were wasted, the, the cities troubled, you know, the, the city shall be cast down or whatever I just read earlier in the scriptures. And then you saw that robot representing the technology that's going to be in these times. <laughs> it, it's all on point, man. And sometimes their predictions come true. But, um, you know, it's all... um. It's all the elites just playing mind games with the masses because they understand the scriptures, man. So they're like prophets on the left-hand side, basically, man. But they love to put it in your face. So let me bring out a few precepts and then we'll close it out because we're getting ready to wrap it up. All right, can you see that, yeah? Yeah. 
All right, so this is the book of Second Ezra's chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, right? The tokens is the prophecies. So basically concerning the prophecies we've been speaking about, it says, Behold, the days shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number. And the way of truth shall be hidden. That's the famine of the word pursuing to Amos 8 and 11. It says, And the way of truth shall be hidden, meaning the prophets ain't going to be out here teaching anymore during that time. It says, And the land shall be barren of faith. No one's going to have any faith of anybody coming to save them. So they're going to take matters into their own hands. Especially these Christians that have been deceived all their life waiting on the rapture. They're gonna they're gonna realize they've been deceived and then they're gonna lose their hope in their in their Jesus. <laughs> you know? Because they've been told lies, man. So this is the time we're coming into, man. People are gonna be it says they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number. <laughs> Meaning killed, put to death, judged in a great number, great depopulation. It says, And the way of truth shall be hidden, the land shall be barren of faith. Verse 2, But iniquity, which is sin upon sin, crime, violence, all sorts of things, man. It says, Shall be increased above that which thou now seest, or that thou has heard long ago. So basically, this is going to be a time like there's never been. Just like I read in Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 5 and verse 1. It goes hand in hand with this. So there's getting ready to be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble, that has never been on earth. This is going to trump, this is going to trump slavery, it's going to trump 70 AD, it's going to trump any time that's been, any time, any bad time that's ever been on this earth, this is going to be worse, man. Imagine this earth that is so dependent on technology and their smartphones and their gadgets and their devices and the comfort of their home, their central heating, you know, their microwaves, all of that gone because of the system collapse when this dollar crashes and then there's no electricity, no internet, all of that mm -hmm. for a certain period of time. Crazy, man. But this is what's coming, man. I think that's it. Yeah. So it says, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I might as well just read this last bit. It says, And the land that thou seest now to have root, meaning this functioning society, shall thou see wasted suddenly. There goes that word suddenly again. Like we said earlier, you know, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. That's what's coming, man. These precepts link together, and this is how you're meant to read the Bible. Precept upon precept to get the understanding. What was you going to say, Salakia? Yeah, well, I was just going to bring up a quick precept. Um, yeah, this is the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, which the days are coming, um, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. Right, mm. so that that famine, like you know, it, it also goes into the famine of hearing the words of of the Lord. You know, like you can have like like my brother mentioned about these Christians. They've been taught, you know, lies uh, as long as they've been going to the Christian church, and then when all hell breaks loose and and the rapture doesn't come, they're gonna be looking for answers, but they ain't gonna find them because you know, the Lord's gonna. Uh, was it make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth roughly paraphrasing yep. you know yep. that's that's the famine of the word you ain't gonna get this truth raw and and uncut how how the israelites bring it out you know especially uh, uh the the 100 truth that great millstone brings out you know yeah you ain't gonna have the answers man everybody's yeah. gonna be in the street so uh what does this say? They, there shall be a, a crying for wine in the streets. Mm -hmm. Wine going into answers. People are going to be seeking answers, man. But they ain't going to be able to find it, man. So, did you read um, verse 12? Verse 12. Read no. that. It yeah, says, read that. Uh, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro 
to seek the word of Yahweh and shall not find it. There we go. You know, the scriptures are clear. You know, they're pretty straightforward and clear. Yeah. You, you basically didn't get this word while you had the chance, man. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this quick uh, image. I must explain this and then I'll go, grab a precept. Klaus Schwab says humans who res refuse to merge with AI will soon become extinct. So they're going to wipe you off the earth if you don't bow down and accept their B system, in mm -hmm. other words. The MOTB. Yep. Because this is the image of the beast. This is what the, the, the picture, that, the, the bigger picture that's coming together, man. If you get what I'm saying. This is the image of the beast. It's not no damn Sergio Bourget. Okay. All countries of the world are not going to be worshipping white Jesus. That's not what they're saying. They're not going to force that on the whole world. They're talking about a one world religion. Bringing everybody together in some Tower of Babel type spirit. Mm -hmm. They ain't talking about pushing Sergio Bourget on everyone, man. So that, that doctrine pushed by IUIC is absolutely bogus, man. They don't understand the scriptures. False prophets. Mm -hmm. It says in the Quote, scriptures that... Uh... You know, the things written aforetime were written for our learning, right? You remember what happened at the Tower of Babel. The Lord, you know, scattered them all and confused them all. Yep. You know? So, like uh, Esau you know, the Edom, they're, they're, they're so proud that they, they actually believe that they can, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, go around what the Lord is, is setting in place, you know? Like they think they can get around the, the Lord. Get around the prophecy, yeah. yeah. Because they're children of fools, man. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this is their plans. They say if you don't comply with our NWO agenda, then you don't deserve to live, because they want things done their way. And if you're not down with the program, you're out of here. And the scriptures speak about them that don't bow down and accept the MOTB. Okay, which is part of this merging with AI. Put in a put in a technology in your body. Let's just say, mm -hmm. if you don't comply with that, then you're gonna get the chop chop. You're gonna have your head cut off, just like the scriptures speak about. Lord willing, we're gonna go into an in-depth breakdown of the mark of the beast in the near future. We're gonna do a lesson on that, so that you can uh, further understand what we're talking about. Basically, you can call it part two to this lesson, man. Because that goes hand in hand with what's going on in the world today. Now, one second, let me just uh, switch screens real quick. That. Let's go here, right. We got Second Ezra chapter nine. I'm gonna read this, then I think we're almost done. Mm -hmm. So this is second. What's that? Oh no, I didn't say nine. Oh okay. So this is Second Ezra nine and verse one. It says, "He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself.' So how do you measure the time? It's by paying attention to the prophecies, man. Not being in la la land. Not being distracted by bread and circus, man." things that don't matter basically paying attention to what's going on and linking it up with biblical prophecy this is how you can tell what time it is so you can stay calm and know that it's not time for certain things to happen yet like the nukes everybody's panicking about the nukes it ain't that time yet because certain prophecies have to come to pass before that like the motb jacob's trouble so we know the nukes ain't coming yet so it says measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, which we're seeing now, war, famine, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, part of the signs pass. Verse 2, it says, Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest, Yahweh Shim Shai, will begin to visit the world which he made. Okay, so he's getting ready to visit this world with plagues. And, uh judgments excuse me verse 3 it says therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world like the palestinian protests that's uproars 
UK riots, that's up roars. You know, uh, riots all over the world and protests about government corruption. It's happening on a daily basis, man. So when you see these things happen, right? It says, Then shalt thou well understand. It will become crystal clear that the Most High, Yahweh Shem Shai, spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, meaning this was prophesied from the foundation of the earth. When the earth was created, these things were prophesied, man, to happen at some point. And we're in that time, the end of an era, the end of an age, the end of an eon, man. So it says, uh, for like that, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, meaning the end is clear, is crystal clear. It says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in one in wonder and powerful works, and endings in effects and signs. Verse seven, and every one that shall be saved. These are the ones that are going to be saved. It says, and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. You can't just say with your lips, I believe. I believe in you, Jesus. Yeah, you like you live the life of, of nothing but wickedness and sin. And then on your deathbed, I believe. And then you, yeah. you, you, you're good. You're good from like there. You made, like you made it to the pearly gates. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? bug outs would be saying i believe and then just you know <laughs> being it's bad <laughs> crazy but a lot of christians are in that mindset they actually think that on their deathbed they can just call on jesus and they're good after living after twerking in the club pulling drive-by shootings all sorts of stuff all their life and then boom they can call on the lord and they're good nah man and every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works, not clapping and singing in the Christian church and getting robbed in tithes and offerings, by his works and by faith, which you can't, you can't do works without faith. And you can't have faith without works. It says, whereby ye have believed. This is how you show you believe with your actions, not your lips. It says, shall be preserved from the said perils, meaning you're going to be saved from the things that we're speaking about that's coming to this earth. Mass starvation, mass depopulation, violence and bloodshed, cannibalism. It says, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Talking about the elect of Israel, you know. You'll get to see the day of the Lord and the elect being delivered, man. And you will be a part of that elect. Because they've been predestinated. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Right? So the, the ones that didn't listen to the prophets that are out here teaching you, and you thought we were black identity extremists, black Hebrew Israelites, a cult, a racist hate group, you know, all these things you say about us. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. So watching your children get skinnier and skinnier and crying for food is dwelling in torments. It says, For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. You had it sweet. And you thought you didn't need the Lord, man. You didn't need that Bible crap. You know, quote, unquote, it says in verse 11, and they that have loathed, meaning despised my law, while they or had a strong dislike to the, the, the ways of the Lord. Right. You didn't want nothing to do with the Bible. You said, I'm going to continue to eat shrimp, crab and lobster. You can't tell me nothing. I prayed over my food as an example. They that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, because right now you have access to this truth, okay? That famine of the word hasn't come yet. So you have the liberty right now. You can click on YouTube and watch our videos, but that ain't always going to be. It says, and when as place of repentance was open to them, meaning you can't call upon the Lord on your deathbed, or when you're catching hell during Jacob's trouble and think, I'll call on the Lord now. I'm ready to serve you now. No, it's too late, man. 
and when as place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. So you didn't care. Verse 12, it says, the same must know it after death by pain. So a painful death. Right. I just want to quickly jump to verse 22. And then we'll, uh, I'll see if we've got any more precepts and we'll close it out. So verse 22, 2nd Ezra 9 and 22. It says, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. So the great culling is coming and anybody that perishes weren't innocent. There's a scripture that speaks about that in the book of Job. Did any man perish being innocent or whom did the Lord forsake? that trusted in him or something like that so let's say let the multitude perish the masses of the world the the vast population of the world let them perish which was born in vain your life is meaningless okay just live it up keep doing what you're doing man everyone's in their lot it says let the multitude perish which was born in vain and let my grape be kept which is the is the elect of israel the grape out of the vineyard, man. Grape out of a cluster or whatever. It says, and my plant, which is another name for the, for the Israelites or the elect of Israel. It says, for with great labor have I made it perfect. So the Lord has sent his prophets out here for years to get them right and to, for them to rehearse the righteous acts. You know, we just, uh, we just partook in the day of atonement. But a lot of you didn't. You was probably out doing your own thing despising the law of the Lord and it is part of our custom part of the law in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 for you to keep the day of atonement throughout your generations meaning to this day man but a lot of you didn't want to because you had other things to do more more important things to do yeah it says for with great labor have I made it perfect so the ones that are going to be saved are the ones that the Lord has preserved through great labor you know We've been purifying ourselves over time and rehearsing the righteous acts. Did I bring that one out? Yeah, let me just quickly put this here. Job 5 and 12, it says, He disappointeth the devices of the crafty, which is these elites. So basically, their plans of their new world order... They're only going to go so far. And then eventually, the Lord is going to stop them dead in their tracks and rain them nukes upon them, man. Okay. It says, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. They're not going to fulfill their agenda to enslave you with their technology that they implant in you. Pursuant to Revelations 13 and 16. When that starts to happen, all you have to do is resist that which you're going to catch hell for resisting, but you have to catch, you have to go through hell resisting that for a period of time. And then eventually the Lord's going to step in at the last minute and destroy them and deliver them that were faithful and didn't bow down and worship the beast in his image. Okay. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, the brethren is the elect, ye have no need that I write unto you. So this is talking to the elect directly. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh, cometh as a thief in the night. It's going to come suddenly. It's going to sneak up on the world. It says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. And I know you brought that out earlier, but I had that on deck. And uh, obviously there was a tiny bit more meat in the beginning of that. Let me just quickly skip to the next. All right. When it says brethren, it's talking about the elect, the ones in the know, the ones that are paying attention. It says, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness like the rest of the world in La La Land. It says that that day should overtake you as a thief. Might as well read the rest. 
So it says um, in verse 5, Ye are all children of the light, although you mistake us as black identity extremists and a racist hate group. Ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And that don't mean you can't have a little beer here and there. I ain't talking about that kind of sober, man. It means to be alert, to be on guard, to be on watch. You're not drunk and in la-la land like the rest of these people in the world, man. It says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For the Most High have not appointed us to wrath, but obtain, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai. Right? So the, we're already, you know, Lord willing we be of that number, but the elect are already predestined, man. They've been, they've not been appointed to wrath. They've always been chosen to be delivered. You better pray that you're among that that number and, you know, take his words serious, man. Okay. I'll leave it there. I think I've brought out everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You got anything you want to bring out? Nah, I mean, I did have uh, a precept, uh, something you brought out earlier, which I can just quickly read, but I don't really yeah. have anything there. But it says, uh, this is Job chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or yeah. where were the righteous cut off? Yeah. Right? And I mean, it says, uh, even, I, uh, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and so wickedness reap the same so you know when you were saying about you know people being taken out you know it's, yeah, it's, like it's because 9 and 22 yeah yeah mm -hmm. because obviously you know they're not innocent you know people don't just die being innocent like they, something in in their uh, you know in their past may be catching up to them and this is their judgment you mm -hmm. know or in this present carnation. yeah or, or yeah exactly you know, you reap, yeah, you, you sow, you plow and sow iniquity, sow wickedness, you're going to reap the same, mm -hmm. which is wickedness, the evil that's coming. You know, scriptures say, let the multitude perish that was born in vain. So if you perish, it means you wasn't innocent. The Lord is just in his ways and in his judgments, man. The Lord can't do iniquity, okay? So... I think we'll close out there good yeah. lesson lord willing you people out there have been edified through this man you know this is the times we're living in we're getting ready to see a lot of death whether or not it's in 2025 or not you know apostle tahar elder apostle tahar is um declared 2024 the hopeful year of jacob's trouble and hey this is what the elect are hoping and waiting for man you know, although it sounds bad, hey, we're hoping for the destruction of these two thirds so that we can see righteousness on the earth, man. These people are, are too far gone, they're unfixable, and they gotta go for the greater good, man. So, hey, just pray that you're not among that number, you know? And pray to, pray that you're among the elect, you know? Don't worry about them, okay? All right, so we'll close out there. Right. Lord willing, you've been edified. We're going to give all honor, praise, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kwadash. All right, Shalom. Shalom.